What's going on guys, Trapaduski here. Today we're gonna do our day one T13's guide for the Necromancer for season 13. Now, the Necromancer is getting the Inaria set for its Hedrix gift for completing the seasonal journey once you get your GR20 down. And the Inaria set out of all the sets is probably one of the weakest ones. But that being said, you can still do the pet variant that we're very used to. You can set the pet the pet build up, the mage build for Trogul's, Rothma's, Anarius, pretty much all of the sets. Now this one, even though it's weaker than the other two, is still gonna be able to carry you through T13 and coupled with the gold wrap and a couple other items, it will be able to su survive pretty well also. So let's jump into the gear and start going over it. Now, first things first, I wanna talk about the items that you're gonna go for right at level one. Now, at level level one when you're doing when you when you create your character for the season you're going to want to create your new necromancer and then immediately go do your challenge rift and with that challenge rift you're going to get the reward cash that will have bounty mats in it blood shards in it death breaths in it all of those things with those death's breath you can immediately start rolling rings on the necromancer now the julian's love ring or najul's evil the circle of julian's love you now raise an additional skeletal mage with each cast and they last an additional four seconds if you get this ring right off the bat it's really really useful throughout the rest of the season you can put it here in the cube and right away start doing way more with your mages even while you're leveling the necromancer now once you have this ring you can go through the 1 to 70 process using mages as your primary damage output you're going to get extra mages and it's going to make things a lot easier for you from there you'll hit 70 get your seasonal your seasonal um, cash completed and get your six piece you're going to go directly over to rolling scythes now the scythe that we're going to be using for this setup will be the jezith scythe uh, skull scythe this combined with the shield the jezith set while your commands your skeletons are commanded to attack a target all of your minions deal 400% increased damage. Now, that means once you command your skeletons in, your mages are gonna hit 400% harder. This is a really, really nice multiplier. It helps early. And another added bonus of rolling scythes is you need a scythe of the cycle in your cube for this thing to work. And you're gonna need a scythe of cycle for the Rothma setup for the speed variant. So rolling scythes is a very, very good option when starting out the season with your death breath in the cube. So you're gonna be looking for this. You're gonna want a Trogul's Fang eventually. You're gonna use the Jezith set. So all of these things you'll get from rolling that one item. So once you've got these two things, the scythe of cycle in the cube and your Jezith uh, scythe, and then you go for your shield, once you have this set done and you're here, you're already going to be doing a lot of damage, right? Now, the thing that's going to hold you back with this set early on is survivability. The Necromancer is notoriously squishy, so that's what we're going to address next. What you're going to want to go for next is your Gold Wrap. Now, your Gold Wrap, coupled with Abuna the Hoarder, is going to give you a lot of survivability. Now, the way that this set's designed, you need to be near the enemies with your bone armor hitting things in order to get that multiplier on the set. So when you're in that area, this is an ideal scenario for a gold wrap setup. As things die, gold is dropping, you're gonna be grabbing gold from things and it's gonna give you this huge burst of toughness that will keep you alive while you're in near the enemies. Now, that being said, you are gonna run into scenarios where you don't have gold down. Maybe you'll come into a rift and all there is is an elite pack at the door, even though that's not supposed to happen anymore. And you're gonna what what you're gonna want to do in those scenarios is skip that elite, come up to some trash, start getting some gold spawning, and then kill the elite pack that should follow you up to the trash. You don't want to focus a pack right out the door because you will have trouble surviving. Now, just quickly to mention, you do get a boon of the hoarder automatically when you get a puzzle ring. So if you're running in a four-man group, you take the puzzle ring, put it in the cube, go through it, doesn't matter what difficulty difficulty level it's on. When you kill Greed, Boon of the Hoarder drops, you can start leveling it from there in the lower GRs. Um, once you have your gold wrap and your boon of the hoarder, you're gonna need Crisbins. Now, Crisbins is one of the highest damage multipliers in the game, hands down. So you deal up to 100% increased damage against slowed enemies or triple this bonus against enemies afflicted by any other type 
of control of pairing effect. So you're gonna take this Crisbins and you're gonna use this for not only this setup, for, but for every other viable Necromancer setup in the game. So going for Crisbins and going for rings is really, really good um, after you've got this survivability portion set up. After that, while or while you're upgrading rings in the cube, you can be rolling gloves from Kadala. Now, the gloves will give you a Tasker and Theos. You always want this when you've got a pet set up. Increase the attack speed of your pets by 50%. So you're gonna be using the skeletal mages that give you attack speed anyways, but then coupled with this, you your skeletons and your mages are just gonna be, you know, rapid fire, right? They're gonna be slaying things while you're going through. And you'll see this when we demonstrate it here in a moment. After that, the last two pieces are the Wisdom of Kalan, which gives you um, and increases the amount of stacks you have on bone armor. This is a really nice thing for survivability. You go from 10 stacks to 15. It helps out a ton for keeping you alive. And like I said, keeping you alive is the hardest part with this build. And then finally, you're gonna have the Nemesis Bracers. You'll end up using Nemesis Bracers on every single speed farm build in the game so if you get a terrible pair if you can wear them in the beginning and then later cube them and and hopefully use them on a different class or a different necromancer speed farming setup uh, for late game that's pretty much it that covers all of the gear for the necromancer early on you are going to be i do have yellow gems in my gear and a purple one in my helm you may not have perfect gems at that point but put in whichever ones you have the best if you're still having a lot of trouble with survivability auto attacks and ranged attacks are really really bad so you can put strength gems in there early yes you'll have lower sheet but based on the multipliers that you're working with here, you're going to be able to do the damage. I don't think being, doing the damage is going to be the issue. Um, the, the legendary gems we're using, it's a 25 Bane of the Hoarder, a 25 Boon of the Hoarder, a 25 Enforcer, and then a 25 Bane of the Trapped. I like to keep those gems low just to be realistic. And um, quickly, we'll go over the abilities here. So I'm using Bone Spikes, Frost Spikes. You don't have to use Frost Spikes. You could use Sudden Impacts for one of the stuns for Crisbins. But the Frost Spikes here slow things. Now this is going to help with that survivability. As I said, if you get mob types that are really, really fast and they rush into you, um, if, you if you're using the Bone Spikes from range, it's gonna slow them and take them longer to get to you and hit you with an auto attack. Because with the Necromancer, one auto attack can kill you unfortunately so i like to opt for frost spikes here uh, skeletal mage skeleton archer uh, skeletal archers increase your attack speed by three percent for five seconds each time they deal damage max 10 stacks that's 30 percent attack speed so you'll see everything in here attacking very very quickly the uh, aura devouring aura this is here to give you not only some essence but also some life some sustainability while you're cruising through plus devouring aura you don't even have to think about uh, blood rush potency increase your armor by a hundred percent for two seconds after casting this is another really nice thing as with this setup you're diving in and then doing damage in the packs so you dive in and you have two seconds of 100 percent increased armor uh, command skeletons freezing grasp now i have also tried dark mending to give you a little bit more of that heal while they're attacking i like freezing grasp better and then bone armor dislocation this stuns enemies when you proc it so you'll notice you're not doing a ton of damage you'll jump in and bone armor and it does that stun and right there it procs that extra damage damage buff from the Crisbins and they kind of melt stuff at that point. The passives I've gone with here are final service. This is your oh shit passive. Your mages do die when this happens, but at least you don't. So you can quickly recast your mages out and start doing damage again. Extended servitude, increase the duration of your skeletal mage and revive minions by 25%. Swift, swift harvesting, increase the attack speed of bone spikes, siphon blood and grim scythe by 15%. This just lets you get essence way faster and also put that slow on more enemies as you're Going through and then I take draw life here you don't have to do this but as I said these things tend to have difficulty surviving so I like to use things that will help with that draw life here uh, will 
increase your life regen by 10% for every enemy within 20 yards. You can also take Fueled by Death here, and that will give you a lot more movement speed as you're automatically consuming corpses as things die. And I would switch to that as I feel my survivability is in a place where I can use it. Um, other than that, we're, I think, pretty much good to go with this. I'm going to jump into a rift quickly and show you how this works. Now, it isn't the best speed farming build. We're just going to throw that out there. The point of these guides is to get you something that will work to get you geared. Now, if you are doing solo self-found league, Leviathan's solo self-found SSF league, then you are going to have to play Necromancer in the beginning if Necro is going to be your primary focus. And so with this, you can utilize it to then gear up for the other pieces that are, you know, potentially the uh, core Corpse Mancer or, or maybe a Pestilence speed farm build or one of the other um, really good speed farm builds for the Necromancer, but this one will enable you to get there. So let's jump into a Rift and uh, see how this thing plays real quick. And as I said, it's pretty squishy until you start getting gold running, so make sure to cast out a few mages right off the bat and then come in and get that bone armor out and then get your skeletons commanding. And once they're going and you've got enough mages out and you can start consuming some gold, you're really, you're really okay, right? The gold wrap bonus doesn't last all that long, but that's why you start from range and use the bone spikes and kind of get things starting to take some damage. When you go in and dislocate, that's when the big damage numbers are gonna come up because you're gonna increase damage by 300% from the Crispin's proc. And then as you can see, things just start dying. And it's really not as a, uh, as, as bad as I had thought it was gonna be, Anarius, when I heard that this was the set, I was like, oh my goodness, dude, what are we gonna do with this in the beginning of the season? Ideally, in those scenarios where you get a really bad set and you're planning on playing with groups, but you're gonna end up needing that class later on, what you're gonna do is have one of your other characters in the group run a monk or something along those lines and kinda, you know, get carried there's nothing wrong with getting carried early on but luckily with every single set that we've gotten for this season we're in a position now where you can do some damage and you can move through the greater rifts or the rifts early on while you're farming keys without much trouble and i was looking for a pack here in the beginning just to kill quickly before we uh went back to town and wrapped up the video and hopefully we'll find one soon of course it's a uh, a rift there we go so once you have a pack and this is just to demonstrate that it can kill them pretty quickly um you're gonna be uh sending in your command skeletons to get that jezith going uh keeping everything slowed with your bone spikes and letting your mages do all the work and then once the gold falls down you know i was just sitting in there kind of tanking stuff as long as there's gold on the ground gold wraps survivability um bonus is so so high i mean you can eat explosions you can eat spears from the uh from goats you can eat everything basically now lasers sometimes will give you trouble right here we obviously don't have gold so you just want to keep your distance you know and let your mages kind of do the work until you get your uh, proc there and then everything starts dying and you're kind of good to go there's not going to be enough gold there for me to eat that explosion so i'm going to get out of it but uh you have enough range with this thing where it's not going to be a problem and sometimes the issue with the mages like as you can see there they didn't want to focus the character i wanted to wanted them to one of the nice little tricks with the uh, necromancer is if you do have a pack or a priority target go ahead and set your mages right on that dude and they should by default attack that enemy so even if you have your 10 mages out already if you've got them out when you encounter the pack go ahead and jump in there command your skeletons on them and start spawning your mages right on top of that yellow they should focus it down and then you can move forward guys this is the final day one t13 guide thank you all so much for checking out all these videos i did one for every class if you haven't seen any of the others and you're tempted to try something else i have something for every single class i did put a couple of my best speed farm builds for the witch doctor and the monk i'm going to go ahead and start doing that for all of the other classes so you not only have 
the day one T13s guide for every class, but you also have the optimized speed farm build that you'll be working towards by utilizing these guides. Everybody, thank you so much for checking these out. And don't forget, we're gonna be taking part in Level With A Cause, Wolf Criers Charity, fundraiser for season uh, 13. We've done it for the last couple of seasons and I'm really, really excited. It's really nice to see the Diablo community come together and make money for a really cool charity. So I will be streaming starting an hour before the season starts on Friday. That is <clears throat> 5 p.m. MST and I'll be going all through the night. So we'll be streaming until probably 5, 6 a.m. We'll take a two, three hour break and then we'll hop right back on and keep streaming throughout that whole day. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the twitch stream it's twitch.tv slash come by and check it out anytime that's monday through saturday starting at noon mst thank you guys so much good luck in the griffs and good luck on season 13 peace